Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to True Crime, the podcast that helps you find new, emerging, and undiscovered true crime podcasts. I'm Greg, the host and curator of True Crime. All of January, we are focusing on clicking that follow button. So if you're listening to this and you haven't yet clicked that follow button, give it a click now. I'm so amazed at the response with the follow so far. We are up 12% since December. That is amazing. So from December to January, the followers are up 12%, and that's because of you. You heard my call to hit follow, and you're doing it, and I appreciate it. So let's keep it up. Today's episode is from Lizzie Borden Audio. Lizzie Borden Audio appeals to lovers of the dark and macabre nature of a historical true crime investigation from a famous 1892 case. If you like today's episode, make sure to check out the episode description for links to subscribe. All right, let's get this show started. Begin. Welcome to Lizzie Borden Audio. Listening to A Touch of Madness based on the trial of Lizzie Borden by Kate Lavender. Your full name Lizzie Andrew Borden. Is it Lizzie or Elizabeth? Lizzie. You were so christened? I was so christened. What is your age, please? 32. Your mother is not living? No, sir. When did she die? She died when I was two and a half years old. You do not remember her then? No, sir. What was your father's age? He was 70 next month. What was his whole name? Andrew Jackson Borden. And your stepmother, what was her whole name? Abby Durfee Borden. How long had your father been married to your stepmother? I think about 27 years. How much of that time have they lived in the house on 2nd Street? I think. I'm not sure, but I think about 20 years last May. Always occupied the whole house? Yes, sir. Somebody told me it was once fitted up for two tenements. When we bought it, it was for two tenements, and the man we bought it off of stayed there a few months until he finished his own house. After he finished his own house and moved into it, there was no one else moved in. We always had the hole. Have you any idea how much your father was worth? No, sir. Have you ever heard him say? No, sir. Have you formed any opinion? No, sir. Do you know something about his real estate? About what? His real estate. I know what real estate he owned, part of it. I don't know whether or not I know all of it or not. Well, tell me what you know of. He owns two farms in Swansea, the place on 2nd Street and the A.J. Borden building, and corner and the land on South Main Street where McManus is. And then a short time ago, he bought some real estate up further south that formerly, he said, belonged to a Mr. Birch. Did you ever deed him any property? He gave us, uh, some years ago, Grandfather Borden's house on Ferry Street, and he bought that back from us some weeks ago. I don't just know how many. As near as you can recall? Well, I should say in June, but I'm not sure. What did you mean by bought it back? He bought it of us and gave us the money for it. How much was it? How much money? Uh, he gave us 5000 for it. Did you pay him anything when you took a deed from him? Pay him anything? No, sir. How long ago was it you took the deed from him? When he gave it to us? Yes. I can't tell you. I should think five years? Did you have any other business transactions with him besides that? No, sir. In real estate? No, sir. Or in personal property? No, sir. Never? Never. No transfer of property one way or the other? No, sir. At no time? No, sir. And I understand he paid you cash for this property? Yes, sir. You and Emma equally? Yes, sir. How many children has your father? Only two. Only you two? Yes, sir. Any others ever? One that died. Did you know of your father making a will? No, sir. Except I heard somebody say once that there was one several years ago. That is all I ever heard. Who did you hear say so? I think it was Mr. Morse. What Morse? Uncle John V. Morse. How long ago? 
How long ago I heard him say it? I haven't any idea. What did he say about it? Nothing, except just that. What? That Mr. Borden had a will. Did you ask your father? I did not. Did he ever mention the subject of a will to you? He did not. He never told you that he had made a will? No, Or had not? No, no, sir. Did he have a marriage settlement with your stepmother that you know of? I never knew of any. Had you heard anything of his proposing to make a will? No, sir. Do you know of anybody that your father was on bad terms with? There was a man that came there that he had trouble with. I don't know who the man was. When? I cannot locate the time exactly. It was within two weeks. That is, I don't know the date or day of the month. Well, tell all you saw and heard. I did not see anything. I heard the bell ring, and father went to the door and let him in. I did not hear anything for some time except just the voices. Then I heard the man say, I would like to have that place. I would like to have that store. Father said, I'm not willing to let your business go in there. And the man said, I thought with your reputation for liking money, you would let your store for anything. Father said, you are mistaken. Then they talked a while. And then their voices were louder. And I heard father order him out and then went to the front door with him. What did he say? He said he had stayed long enough and that he would thank him to go. Did he say anything about coming again? No, sir. Did your father say anything about coming again? Uh, no, sir. Have you any idea who that was? No, sir. I think it was a man from out of town because he said he was going home to see his partner. Have you had any efforts made to find him? We have had a detective. That is all I know. You have not found him? Not that I know of. You can't give us any other idea about it? Nothing but what I've told you. Besides that, do you know of anybody that your father had had bad feelings toward or who had bad feelings toward your father? I know of one man who was not friendly with him. They have not been friendly for years. Who? Mr. Hiram C. Harrington. What relation is he to him? He is my father's brother-in-law. Your mother's brother? My father's only sister married Mr. Harrington. Anybody else? that was on bad terms with your father or that your father was on bad terms with? Not that I know of. You have no reason to suppose that the man you spoke of a week or two ago had ever seen your father before or since? No, sir. Do you know of anybody that was on bad terms with your stepmother? No, sir. Or that your stepmother was on bad terms with? No, sir. Had your stepmother any property? I don't know. Only that she had half the house that belonged to her father. Where was that? On 4th Street. Who lives in it? Her half-sister. Any other property besides that that you know of? I don't know. Did you ever know of any? No, sir. Did you understand that she was worth anything more than that? I never knew. Did you ever have any trouble with your stepmother? No, sir. Have you, within six months, had any words with her? No, sir. Within a year? No, sir. Within two years? I think not. When was the last time that you know of? About five years ago. What about? Her stepsister, half-sister. What name? Her name is now is Mrs. George W. Whitehead. Nothing more than hard words? No, sir. They were not hard words. It was simply a difference of opinion. You've been on pleasant terms with your stepmother since then? Yes, sir. Cordial? It depends upon one's idea of cordiality, perhaps. According to your idea of cordiality? We were friendly. Very friendly. Cordial. According to your idea of cordiality? Quite so. What do you mean by quite so? Quite cordial. I don't mean the dearest of friends in the world, but very kindly, feelings, and pleasant. I don't know how to answer you any better than that. You did not regard her as your mother? Not exactly, no. Although she came there when I was very young. Were your relations towards her that of daughter and mother? In some ways it was, and in some ways it was not. In what ways was it? I declined to answer. Why? Because I don't know how to answer it. Well, in what ways was it not? I did not call her mother. What name did she go by? Mrs. Borden. When did you begin to call her Mrs. Borden? I should think five or six years ago. Before that time, you had called her mother? Yes, sir. What led to the change? The affair with the stepsister. So that the affair was serious enough to have you changed from calling her mother, do you mean? I did not choose to call her mother. Have you ever called her mother since? Yes, occasionally. To her face, I mean? Yes. Often? No, sir. Seldom? Seldom. Your usual address was Mrs. Borden? Yes, sir. Did your sister Emma call her mother? She always called her Abby from the time she came into the family. Is your sister Emma old? Older than you? Yes, sir. What is her age? She is 10 years older than I am. She was somewhere about 14 when she came there. What was your stepmother's age? I don't know. I asked her sister, and she said 64. I told them 67. I did not know. I told her nearly as I knew. I did not know there was so much difference between her and my father. Why did you leave off calling her mother? Because I wanted to. Is that all the reason you can give to me? I haven't any other answer. Can't you give me any better reason than that? I have not any reason to give, except that I did not want to. In what respects were the 
the relations between you and her that of mother and daughter, besides not calling her mother? I don't know that any of the relations were changed. I'd never been to her as a mother, her stepsister, half-sister. What name? Her name now is Mrs. George W. Whitehead. Nothing more than harsh words? No, sir. There were not hard words. It was simply a difference of opinion. You have been on pleasant terms with your stepmother since then? Yes, sir. Cordial? It depends upon one's idea of cordiality, perhaps. According to your idea of cordiality? We were friendly. Very friendly. Cordial? According to your idea of cordiality? Quite so. What do you mean by quite so? Quite cordial. I do not mean the dearest of friends in the world, but very kindly feelings and pleasant. I don't know how to answer you any better than that. You did not regard her as your mother? Not exactly, no. Although she came there when I was very young. Were your relations towards her that of daughter and mother? In some ways it was, and in some ways it was not. In what ways was it not? I declined to answer. Why? Because I don't know how to answer it. In what way was it not? I did not call her mother. What name did she go by? Mrs. Borden. When did you begin to call her Mrs. Borden? I should think five or six years ago. Before that time you had called her mother? Yes, sir. What led to the change? The affair with her stepsister. So that the affair was serious enough to have you changed from calling her mother, do you mean? I did not choose to call her mother. Have you ever called her mother since? Yes, occasionally. To her face, I mean? Yes. Often? No, sir. Seldom? Seldom. Your usual address was Mrs. Borden? Yes, sir. Did your sister Emma call her mother? She always called her Abby from the time she came into the family. Is your sister Emma older than you? Yes, sir. What is her age? She is ten years older than I am. She was somewhere around about fourteen when she came there. What was your stepmother's age? I don't know. I asked her sister Saturday, and she said sixty-four. I told them sixty-seven. I did not know. Told as nearly as I knew. I did not know there was so much difference between her and my father. Why did you leave off calling her mother? Because I wanted to. Is that all the reason you can give to me? I have not any other answer. Can you give me a better reason than that? I have not any reason to give except that I did not want to. In what respects were the relations between you and her that of mother and daughter, besides not calling her mother? I don't know that any of the relations were changed. I had never been to her as a mother in many things. I always went to my sister because she was older and had the care of me after my mother died. In what respects were the relations between you and her that of mother and daughter? That is the same question you asked before. I can't answer you any better than I did before. You did not say before you could not answer, but that you declined to answer. I declined to answer because I do not know what to say. That is the only reason? I can't answer you any better than I did before. You did not say before you could not answer, but that you declined to answer. I declined to answer because I do not know what to say. That is the only reason? Yes, sir. You called your father father. Always. Were your father and mother happily united? Why, I don't know but that they were. Why do you hesitate? Because I don't know that, but that they were, and I'm telling the truth as nearly as I know it. Do you mean me to understand they were happy entirely or not? So far as I know they were. Why did you hesitate then? Because I do not know how to answer you any better than what came into my mind. I was trying to think of it, and I was telling it as I should. That's all. Do you have any difficulty in telling it as you should? Any difficulty in answering my questions? Some of your questions I have difficulty answering because I just don't know how you mean them. Did you ever know of any difficulty between her and your father? No, sir. Did he seem to be affectionate? I think so. As a man and a woman who are married ought to be? So far as I have ever had the chance of judging. They were? Yes. What dress did you wear the day they were killed? I had um, a navy blue sort of bengaline silk skirt with a navy blue blouse in the afternoon. Um, they thought I had better change it, so I put on a pink wrapper. Did you change your clothing before the afternoon? No, sir. You dressed in the morning, as you have described, and kept the clothing on until afternoon? Yes, sir. When did Morse come there first? I, I don't mean this visit. I mean as a visitor, John V. Morse. Do you mean this day that he came and stayed all night? No. Was this the first visit to your house? He has been in the East a year or more. Since he has been in the East, has he been in the habit of coming to your house? Yes. Came in any time he wanted to. Before that, had he been at your house, before he came east? Yes. He has been here. If you remember the winter that the river was frozen over, they went across. Uh, he was there that winter, some 14 years ago, was it not? I am not answering questions, but asking them. I don't remember the date. He was here that winter. Has he been here since? He has been here once since. I don't know whether he has or not since. How many times this year has he been at your house? 
None at all to speak of. Nothing more than a night or two at a time. How often did he come to spend a night or two? Really, I don't know. I'm away so much myself. Your last answer is that you don't know how much he had been there because you had been away yourself so much. Yes. That is true the last year since he has been east? I have not been away the last year so much, but other times I have been away when he was been here. Do I understand you to say that his last visit before this one was 14 years ago? No, he has been here once between the two. How long did he stay then? I don't know. How long ago was that? I don't know. Give me your best remembrance. Five or six years, perhaps six. How long has he been east this time? I think over a year. I'm not sure. During the last year, how much of the time has he been at your house? Very little that I know of. Your answer to that question before was, I don't know because I have been away so much myself. I did not mean I had been away very much myself in the last year. How much have you been away in the past last year? I have been away a great deal in the daytime, occasionally at night. Where in the daytime? Any particular place? No, around town. When you go off nights, where? Never, unless I've been off on a visit. When was the last time you've been away for more than a night or two before this affair? I don't think I've been away to stay more than a night or two since I came from abroad, except about three or four weeks ago I was in New Bedford for three or four days. Where at New Bedford? At 20 Madison Street. How long ago were you abroad? I was abroad in 1890. When did he come to the house the last time before your father and mother were killed? He stayed there all night Wednesday night. My question is when he came there. I don't know. I was not home when he came. I was out. When did you first see him there? I did not see him at all. How did you know he was there. I heard his voice. You did not see him Wednesday evening. I did not. I was out Wednesday evening. You did not see him Thursday morning. I did not. He was out when I came downstairs. When was the first time you saw him? Thursday noon. You had never seen him before that? No, sir. Where were you Wednesday evening? I spent the evening with Miss Russell. As near as you can remember, when did you return? About nine o'clock at night. The family had then retired? I don't know whether they had or not. I went right to my room. I don't remember. You did not look to see? No, sir. What door did you come in at? The front door. Did you lock it? Yes, sir. For the night? Yes, sir. And went right upstairs to your room? Yes, sir. When was it that you heard the voice of Mr. Morse? I heard him down there about supper time. No, it was earlier than that. I heard him down there somewhere about three o'clock, I think. I was in my room Wednesday, not feeling well, all day. Did you eat supper at home Wednesday night? I was at home. I did not eat any supper because I did not feel able to eat supper. I'd been sick. You did not come down to supper? No, sir. Did you hear him eating supper? No, sir. I did not know whether he was there or not. You heard him in the afternoon? Yes, sir. Did you hear him go away? I did not. You did not go down to see him? No, sir. Was you in bed? No, sir. I was on the lounge. Why did you not go down? I did not care to go down, and I was not feeling well, and kept to my room all day. You felt better in the evening? Not very much better. I thought I would go and see if the air would make me feel any better. When you came back at nine o'clock, you did not look to see if the family were up? No, sir. Why not? I very rarely do when I come in. You go right to your room? Yes, sir. Did you have a night key? Yes, sir. How did you know it was right to lock the front door? That was always my business. How many locks did you fasten? The spring locks itself, and there is a key to turn, and you manipulate the bolt. You manipulated all those? I used them all. Then you went to bed? Yes, directly. When you got up the next morning, did you see Mr. Morse? I did not. Had the family breakfasted when you came down? Yes, sir. What time did you come downstairs? As near as I can remember. It was a few minutes before nine. Who did you find downstairs when you came down? Maggie and Mrs. Borden. Did you inquire for Mr. Morse? No, sir. Did you suppose he had gone? I do not know whether he had or not. He was not there. Your father was there? Yes, sir. Then you found him? Yes, sir. Did you speak either to your father or Mrs. Borden? I spoke to them all. About Mr. Morse? I did not mention him. Did not inquire anything about him? No, sir. Why did you not go to Marion with the party that went? Because they went sooner than I could, and I was going Monday. Why did they go sooner than you could? What was there to keep you? I had taken the secretaryship and the treasurer of our CE society, had the charge, and the roll call was the first Sunday in August, and I felt I must be there and attend to that part of the business. Where was your sister Emma that day? What day? The day your father and Mrs. Borden were killed. She had been in Fairhaven. Had you written to her? Yes, sir. When was the last time you wrote to her? Thursday morning, and my father mailed the letter for me. Did she get it at Fairhaven? No, sir. It was sent back. She did not get it at Fairhaven, for we telegraphed for her, and she got home there Thursday afternoon. The letter was sent back to this post office. How long 
long had she been in Fairhaven? Just two weeks to the day. You did not visit her in Fairhaven? No, sir. Had there been anybody else around the house that week, on premises? No one that I know of, except the man that called to see him on this business about the store. Was that that week? Yes, sir. I, I misunderstood you, probably. I, I thought you said a week or two before. No, I said that week. There was a man came the week before and gave up some keys, and I took them. Do you remember of anybody else being then around the premises that week? Nobody that I know of or saw. Nobody at work there? No, sir. Nobody doing any chores there? No, sir. Not that I know of. Nobody had access to the house so far as you know during that time? No, sir. I ask you once more how it happened that knowing Mr. Morse was at your house, you did not step in and greet him before you retired? I have no reason, except that I was not feeling well Wednesday and so did not come down. No, you were down when you came in from out. Do you mean Wednesday night? Yes, because... Yes. Because I hardly ever do go in. I generally went right up to my room and I did that night. Could you then go to your room from the back hall? No, sir. From the back stairs? No, sir. Why not? What would hinder? Father's bedroom door was kept locked and his door into my room was locked and hooked, too, I think, and I had no keys. That was the custom of the establishment? It has always been so. It was so Wednesday and so Thursday? It was so Wednesday, but Thursday they broke the door open. That was after the crowd came, before the crowd came. It was so. There was no accident. Except one had a key, and one would have to have had two keys. They would have to have two keys if they went up the back way to get into my room. If they were in my room, they would have to have a key to get into his room, and another key to get into the back stairs. Where did Mr. Moore sleep? In the room, over the parlor, in front of the stairs. Right up the stairs, where your room was? Yes, sir. How far from your room? A door opened into it. The two rooms connected directly? By one door, that is all. Not through the hall? No, sir. Was the door locked? It has been locked and bolted, and a large writing desk in my room kept up against it. Then it was not a practical opening? No, sir. How otherwise did you get from your room to the other room? I have to go into the front hall. How far apart are the two doors? Very near. I don't think more than so far. Was it your habit when you were in your room to keep your door shut? Yes, sir. That time? That Wednesday afternoon? My door was open part of the time, and part of the time I tried to get a nap, and their voices annoyed me and I closed it. I kept it open in summer, more or less, and closed in the winter. Then, unless for some special reason, you kept your door open in the summer. Yes, sir. If it was a warm day, if it was a cool day, I should have closed it. Where was your father when you came down Thursday morning? Sitting in the sitting room in his large chair, reading the Providence Journal. Where was your mother? Do you prefer me to call her Mrs. Borden? I had as soon you call her mother. She was in the dining room with a feather duster, dusting. When she dusted, did she wear something over her head? Sometimes when she swept, but not when dusting. Where was Maggie? Just came in the back door with a long pole, brush, and put the brush on a handle, getting her pail of water, She was going to wash the windows around the house. She said Mrs. Borden wanted her to. Did you get your breakfast that morning? I did not eat any breakfast. I did not feel as though I wanted any. Did you get any breakfast that morning? I don't know whether I ate half a banana. I don't think I did. You drank no tea or coffee that morning? No, sir. And ate no cookies? I don't know whether I did or not. We had some molasses cookies. I don't know whether I ate any that morning or not. Were the breakfast things put away when you got down? Everything except the coffee pot. I'm not sure whether that was on the stove or not. You said nothing about Mr. Morse, your father or mother? No, sir. What was the next thing that happened after you got down? Maggie went out of doors to wash the windows and father came into the kitchen and said he did not know whether he could go down to the post office or not. And then I sprinkled some handkerchiefs to iron. Tell us again what time you came downstairs. It was a little before nine, I should say. Uh, About a quarter? I don't know, sure. Did your father go downtown? He went down later. What time did he start away? I don't know. What were you doing when he started away. I was in the dining room, I think. Yes. I had just commenced, I think, to iron. It may seem a foolish question. How much of an ironing did you have? I only had about eight or ten of my best handkerchiefs. Did you let your father out? No, sir. He went out himself. Did you fasten the door after him? No, sir. Did Meg? I don't know. When she went upstairs, she always locked the door. She had charge of the back door. Did she go out after a brush before your father went away? I think so. Did you say anything to Meg? I did not. Did you say anything about washing the windows? No, sir. Did you speak to her? I think I told her I did not want any breakfast. You do not remember of talking about washing the windows? I don't remember whether I did or not. I do remember it. Yes, I remember. Yes. I asked her to shut the parlor blinds when she got through because the sun was so hot. About what time do you think your father went downtown? I don't know. It must have been about nine o'clock. I don't know what time it was. You think at that time you had begun to end your handkerchiefs? Yes, sir. How long a job was that? I did not finish them. My flats were not hot enough. How long a job would it have been if the flats 
minutes had been right. If they'd been hot, not more than 20 minutes, perhaps. How long did you work on the job? I don't know, sir. How long was your father gone? I... Where were you when he returned? I was down in the kitchen. What doing? Reading an old magazine that had been left in the cupboard. An old Harper's magazine. Had you got through ironing? No, sir. Had you stopped ironing? Stopped for the flats. Were you waiting for them to be hot? Yes, sir. Was there a fire in the stove? Yes, sir. When your father went away, you were ironing then? I had not commenced, but I was getting the little ironing board and the flannel. Are you sure you were in the kitchen when your father returned? I'm not sure whether I was there or in the dining room. Did you go back to your room before your father returned? I think I did carry up some clean clothes. Did you stay there? No, sir. Did you spend any time up the front stairs before your father returned? No, sir. Or after he returned? No, sir. I did not stay in my room long enough when I went up to sew a little piece of tape on a garment. Was that the time when your father came home? He came home after I came downstairs. You were not upstairs when he came home? I was not upstairs when he came home. No, sir. What was Maggie doing when your father came home? I don't remember whether she was there or whether she'd gone upstairs. I I can't remember. Who let your father in? I think he came to the front door and rang the bell, and I think Maggie let him in, and he said that he'd forgotten his key, so I think she must have been downstairs. His key would have done him no good if the locks were left as you left. But they were always unbolted in the morning. Lizzie is played by Tanya Montoya, and Hosea Knowlton, the district attorney, is played by Tim Dennis. I'm Martin Dodge at Cable Radio, and if you would like more information, visit the website of Lizzie Borden, audio.com. Thanks again for listening to True Crime by Indie Drop-In Network. If you would like to nominate a true crime podcast to be featured, just send me a tweet at Indie Drop-In. I'd also love to hear if one of our featured podcasts is now your favorite show. Indie Drop-In survives off ad revenue and listener donations. If you would like to contribute, please consider buying me a coffee. You can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Indie Drop-In. If you look at the very bottom of the episode description, I put a link in there to make it really easy. Indie Drop-In has many other shows that you also might like. Just go to IndieDropIn.com. All right, see you next week.